away from her, you bitch! Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. Today we're going to be looking at a couple of different knives, a few different knives sitting here underneath my lens because they're all very, very exciting. They also have something else in common. They all belong to one uh, buddy of mine named Derek who generously sent me these, a few other knives, a pair of his uh, brown knives, FSDs, like a huge package of crazy, awesome, amazing knives that I've had the wonderful opportunity to share with you now. And I was going to be doing an individual video for each, but as it stands, I've already had his knives for close to a month at this point, and I don't want to push it out any further by having to do photography on each individual knife than a video on each individual knife. And I think that because these are so close to being the same, at least they follow a lot of the same kind of uh, Giger themes, in their overall design that I, I thought I would go ahead and just bunch these together and do one video. And what I think we've got here are three wonderful representations of Reich's very impressive machining. And then Richard Wu, the owner of Reich, decided to do something quite a bit different with this guy here and make it a very flashy dress piece. Let's go ahead and line these up where they're not banging into each other. And as much as I want to start with the Alien 4, I'm going to hold off for a bit because there's there's something so special about this knife that I do want to take some time with it and really, really get into it. So I'm just going to kind of lay that off to the side and focus on these two Thor variants. So we are looking at the Thor 6 and the Thor 7. The Thor line has been around for a while now. I want to say probably for a good six or seven years. And it's evolved a little bit over time using different materials, uh, as is the case here. Because normally the Thors are very heavily machined titanium. Here you're getting titanium along with G10. So it's a nice little combination. And I wasn't sure that I would like the G10 variation as much as I like the titaniums. But I got to say, it was done really, really well. They're even able to get some of that, uh, that spine theme that's done here in the, the, the milling of the titanium. They're able to replicate it pretty well in the, uh, the G10 as well. Now, the... Thor 6 is a little bit smaller than the Thor 7. If you've ever been looking at these online and went, man, that's, that's really some crazy work. I'd love to get my hands on one of these, but are they any good? Then this video is going to be for you. Now, I'm going to stray from my typical formula, which is to do a pro and con list for each knife. And then I get into specs, and then I get into my overall review of my personal thoughts. Just because I'm doing three knives here in one video, and that would take a very, very, very long time. So I'm just going to kind of free ball it here. I'm going to kind of just ramble on and give you my thoughts on all three knives as we go along. Now, when we're looking at the Thor 7, this is the larger of the two, you're looking at a... 3.54 inch blade versus a three and a quarter inch blade on the Thor 6. So they're going to be substantially different in the way that they carry and probably in your everyday use. When you know that you need a larger blade, then the smaller Thor 6 is probably not going to be the option for you. And these are both good EDC knives because of their very light weight as well as the M390 blades, the amazing edges that Reich is known for putting on all of their knives, and the fact that they're not ridiculously, crazily overpriced. Now, I believe 
The Thor 6 may still be available in certain areas on certain websites. I have not seen a Thor 7 in quite a long time, but they were not extremely expensive to begin with. So even if you're looking on the secondary market and you're buying from a collector, you're probably not going to overspend by too much. You're not going to be in the same price range as this alien with its blued mosaic Damascus, which again, we will be getting to in just a few minutes. I think that deserves its own screen time by itself. So let's talk about the ergonomics first, because you're looking at, especially looking at the little guy, the Thor 6, and thinking with all of that spinal milling that's going on here, that can't be comfortable. Here's the funny thing. They have done a really good job with rounding and softening everything so there's not really any sharp edges you'll feel the little points here but they're not sharp but you do notice them same thing with the scale work going down the back kind of looking like the uh the back of some sort of shelled or armored insect even the lock bar cutout is nice and gentle on the fingers One thing I've always liked is the fact that they, they, they bring that theme through into the spine of the blade up around the blade window. Looks really, really cool. And the action on these is really nice. This one isn't quite drop shutty just because you have very little weight to that blade. So you have to give it a little, little swing to get it going. But you can see that it's very, very smooth. It's more of a, a slow process on the way it closes. It doesn't drop like a guillotine. Even the finishes that have been applied to the blade look really, really good. So you've got what looks like vapor blasting done here on the bevels. And actually, you know what? It kind of looks just as frosty on the flats too, doesn't it? Yeah. And then you have all of the machined finish where they have carved it to give that skeletal spinal look across the spine of the blade. Then all of the venting that's been done here in the frame, all of the windows where you could see completely through the knife when it's open and see the blade when it's closed. Flipper tab is very petite, it's very small, but easily accessed. And there's a little bit of jimping on there. It's not very sharp jimping, but it's just enough to give you the right contact so that you're assured of getting a reliable flipping action every time you slap that flipper tab. It's very skinny, it's very, it's very narrow, and it's very slim. So a smaller hand is going to enjoy this knife probably a lot more than somebody with larger hands. But that's the case really for any smaller knife. It's not uh, you know just this knife. Then we get into the bigger boy, the Thor 7. You have a larger flipper tab that's shaped completely differently. It's a, uh, it's rounded and there's jimping all the way around it. And it has a much more positive feel from the slightly stronger detent. And uh, it is even somehow a little bit smoother as it opens and obviously it's going to be as it closes because it's got a little bit more weight to it being a larger blade. Man, that feels good. Weight difference, let's see, 2.82 ounces. Oops, sorry. Oopsie. Wrong one. Thor 6, 2.82 ounces. Thor 7, 3.17 ounces. And that weight, the difference in the weight, honestly, is going to be in the blade. Because even though you're thinking, well, you know, you've got titanium in G10 and this is all titanium. What's the difference really? The, the difference really is going to be in the weight of the larger blade. That's all I think it's really going to make a huge impact on the weight. Let's take a look at the pocket clips individually here. All right, so we've got a vented, milled, sculpted pocket clip here. And this is obviously milled and sculpted. And then it also has the, the vertebrae design, the, uh, the spinal design carved into it. I think between the two, the one I'm most attracted to 
would be the full skeletonized, full skeletal version here, the full spine work. I am a fan of, uh, of H.R. Heger's artwork, so that whole alien theme that they have going on here in these knives is very attractive to me personally. There are some people that may look at them and go, Oh, they're kind of gas station looking knives. Because they're so over-designed. Oh, that's just like your opinion, man. Everybody's going to be different. And when you get into the world of art knives, which these are not, because these are full production knives that are made overseas. But when you get into full-on art knives, you'll get into some really wild, intricate carvings and engravings and uh, shaping of the pocket clips and things that fall right in line with stuff like this. I mean, look at uh, uh, Rick Lala. Look at some of the knives that he makes where he hand carves the titanium. He does snake-shaped pocket clips and things like that. That's true artist work. And because he is a custom knife maker, he is individually making them by hand, they certainly fall into the art knife category. And these may not because they are machine-made and fully produced, full production line. So it's hard to put those in the same category, but the artistry is still there. And if somebody says, Oh, it just looks like a gas station knife. Well, it really doesn't. And you can feel the quality difference when you pick it up. You pick up one of those cheap gas station knives and you feel how crappy the quality is. You, just in, in the way that they're finished, you can run your fingers across it. Or you could feel the action and, and just realize that that's a real hunk of crap. Whereas these are very expertly made. They're wonderfully made. Great actions, great detents, everything all the way around. And they are still useful as an actual knife because they cut exceedingly well. Now, you may not want to take this particular knife out on the job site with you or working in the workshop because there is a lot of ways for dust, dirt, grime, clippings of whatever, anything to get inside of the knife. And that's not really a great idea. But for normal, regular, everyday carry use, I think most people will find this perfectly acceptable. They'll like the fact that they're holding something unique. You hand it to your buddy and he's probably never seen anything like it. And that really is a calling card of Reich Knives. One that I'm going to be getting to very shortly here, and I keep saying this, I've said this in two videos now, is this one right here with the Mosaic Damascus Blade. A whole bunch of Mokutai. I mean, the knife is flat out fantastic. And while it's certainly not inexpensive... It's quite cheap compared to most other production brands that would be able to offer something similar, which right now I don't know of any other production level brand that's offering a true mosaic Damascus blade. But Richard Wu likes to take something that he finds aesthetically pleasing and then add a little bit of art and flair to it, which is exactly how we're going to make our way into the Alien. Because that's what this knife is all about. Let's get a nice close-up shot here. And if I get rid of some of the direct light, it's really hard to see it. It is very, very, very lightly blued Damascus. Now, when I niter blue a Damascus blade, I go for the very vivid, rich blue at all times when I'm making my knives. I've never really seen anybody do it where it's just, I mean, you can barely detect that it's blued. It's, it's like a light icy blue for one. And there's so few areas that pick up the blue that it's hard to see. And the mirror polishing that's been done here has been done so well that it's hard to see the blue past the polishing. Now, this one is officially called the Alien 4. And I want to give you some quick specs on the Alien 4. As an ambulance drives by outside, I hope my microphone didn't pick that up. 
This is the first time I've ever lived in a neighborhood where I didn't live deep, 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 far into a neighborhood, very far away from the main road. So now I get to hear ambulances and other emergency vehicles about 20 times a day, and it's hugely annoying. All right, let's break away from that for a second. Let's talk about the specs. Then I want to talk about the unique way in which this was built. Because, I mean, what an engineering feat just to have this separate blade steel and have what is essentially a titanium blade holder that attaches the blade to the knife. It's really, really cool. Overall length is 9.05 inches with a blade length of 3.93. So it's just under a 4-inch blade, which is a nice big size. And it feels like it. It's a, it's a good size knife. And it feels really good in the hand because, you know, the architecture of the a way this knife was built, it just fits organically in your hand. It feels really, really nice. Now, I like Persian-style knives or trailing point knives as this blade is for two reasons. One, I love the very aggressive upswept look of the blade, and I love the fact that the whole knife is curved. So it feels really nice in the hand. Your thumb is able to drop lower than uh, across the middle of the palm of your hand, like a lot of knives would be. Now you're dropped down. It's more comfortable. You're following the natural shape of the hand. I've always liked this particular style of knife. That's why I've always loved my Reich Knives Lamella, because it does the same thing, and it's very, very similar in its overall shape. Now... They don't list the composition of the Damascus, unfortunately. And I'm not going to try to guess because I don't know who made the Damascus. And I don't know which steels were used for the Damascus. All I'm going to say is it is a beautiful twist pattern. And again, it's really hard to get the blues to show up. And there's just there's almost no way that I can do it. I can see it with my naked eye, but I cannot capture it in photographs or on video because it's such a faint, faint blue. The entire frame is titanium. The blade holder is titanium. They did a fantastic job of mirror polishing the, uh, the Damascus blade. That's another thing that helps this pop. And make it look as regal and as uh, elegant as it is. One thing I haven't tried is, yeah, no, that's, that's way too high up and inaccessible for a reverse flick. Your, your only option for opening this is going to be with the flipper tab. And man, it flips out really good. And by having that blade holder on there, that titanium blade holder, you've got a nice cohesive design feel here from the, the again, that, uh, that skeletal structure, alien type of skeletonized titanium going into the blade very nicely. And it really does show that you've got something that's made very, very different here because you see the very obvious difference between the steel and the titanium. Now it is marked here Damasteel. And I suppose it could be. But here's the thing. You Damasteel is the brand name of a very specific type of steel Damascus made by Damasteel in Sweden. And it's made completely differently than any other Damascus in the world. This is, Damascus steel is basically one cohesive piece of steel. It's already been patterned and the way that they make it, it comes out as one homogenous piece of steel. So it cannot delaminate or separate in any possible way. The other thing is they're stainless steels. So you cannot blue stainless steel. That's why I'm not going to say it's Damasteel, even though it's been laser engraved into the blade holder. And that honestly is the reason why I have held off on reviewing this particular knife. 
because for whatever reason, Reich lists this as Damasteel. There is no such thing as mosaic Damasteel. It does not exist. They do not offer it. And on top of that, I don't see a way that you could buy various types of Damasteel and make your own mosaic from it. So as eager as I am to get to reviewing that particular knife, you will see this on my channel very, very shortly. I have messaged back and forth with Reich to find out from, from them what the steel is, because it may be listed as damaged steel, but it definitely is not. And I can say safely the same thing for this. This is, there's no way that this can be damaged steel because you can't niter blue stainless steels, only carbon steels. And damaged steel is all stainless steel Damascus production. So, sorry if all that was very, very confusing, but I can guarantee you there are going to be people out there that will review this knife and call that damaged steel because, well, the manufacturer literally wrote damaged steel on there. And I'm sure their website said damaged steel as well. And it's hard to go against what the manufacturer says. But every now and then, you know, um, things are lost in translation. And they may just be calling various Damascus steels damaged steel because it's a Damascus steel. It could be something as simple as that. I don't know. Another thing that I really like is the uh, the pocket clip on this one as well. Beautifully sculpted, nice milled clip, and it's convexed very, very nicely, so it has a rounded, contoured finish to it. They have the beg ball built into the pocket clip, which allows you to have very, very, very strong tension on your pocket clip, yet still get it in and out of the pocket very easily because you have a very small point of contact, very low friction on that. Whoop, I just knocked the camera all around. Sorry about that. And all of the titanium hardware that you see has been anodized blue as well. Looks sharp, looks great. The skeletonized frame does show off the mirror-polished Damascus blade very, very nicely. And then when it's opened, they've also cut away the lock side so that you can see all the way through, making it a truly skeletonized titanium frame. I mean, all the way around. The workmanship on this knife is absolutely insane. Now, I'm having to go off of memory here uh, because I am a fan of this knife. Since it came out, if I remember correctly, these were around $600 when they were being produced and offered. I don't know if the value has gone up or down since they have stopped manufacturing it. But I seem to recall $600 being fairly close. Uh, I seem to recall right around $400 for this one. And right around $400 or maybe just a couple of dollars less on that one. So again, for all the work that goes into these, they're super affordable for this level of machining. And that's something that Reich has become very well known for, is their incredible, impressive, creative machining that they do on their knives. Even if it is something a little more simple like this, you still see beautiful machining done into this frame and the way that they match up their backspacer and, and all of the other little details that they do, everything is beautifully machined and their actions are stellar. They're out of this world. They're always glass smooth. So if you're looking for something unique, something extraordinarily well-made, and priced lower than you would expect for this level of design, then Reich is a great way to go. Once again, I want to give Derek a huge thank you, a virtual hug for sending these out to me, trusting me with his knife collection, because he sent a lot of knives all at one time. And I very, very, very much appreciate that. And I love getting the chance to share unique items like this with my audience when I'm not actively out there buying knives every other week or every week like I used to, it's really great to have uh, buddies like Derek that 
allow me access, oops, allow me access to things that I would not otherwise be able to get. So there you go. There's all three of those. I feel very, very honored to own that one. Anyway, I'm out of here for now, and I'll see you guys on the next video.